Hello, welcome to a new video about Rembrandt watercolour paints. This time I'm going to show you some granulating watercolour. Um, there are some swatches and there will be some comparison with a few other brands. This review is again a presentation rather than a video. That's due to the January weather. That's really terribly bad. It's incredibly overcast and dark. And I try to film, but no good colours would appear with overhead filming or any other way of filming. I found out that making photographs showed um, a result that was much more realistic. Although please do keep in mind that um, I'm working with the worst of circumstances and any artificial light I had worsened the situation much more. So we're going to have to make do, but I think we can actually make do because the result I'm getting in the photos here is good enough um, for the comparison and for the review. You can see exactly what it is that I mean. In reviewing these granulating colours, I thought you might like to see a couple of different brands side by side. So I chose on the right, on the left half um, is a few, is three columns with Rembrandt watercolour paint. Then there is a column with DS paint, which is Daniel Smith. Then there is Schmincke Horodam paint. Then Sennelier paints. And the last one I tested was Blocks. I chose to um, pick colours and brands only that have the exact same composition. So um, there are lots of other brands who carry the same names in their paints. But then when you look at the pigments, you can see it's a different kind of colour. So that wouldn't have been a fair comparison. At the bottom of the colour chart, you can see, and please forget about the cerulean blue for now, but you can see there are, uh, below the oxid black, there are three dusk colours. Dusk yellow, dusk pink, dusk green. Van Gogh also has these colours in their collection, um, and I decided to bring them into this comparison so that you can see what the difference is. Before we take a look at the granulating colours in depth, I want to make a remark up front. I am being asked all the time, Mandy, are the Rembrandt granulating paints better than Daniel Smith paints? Well, I can say there are a couple of colours I think are more beautiful in Rembrandt and some others are more beautiful in Daniel Smith. So please take a look at those colours yourself and see how you feel about that. Um, but generally, you know, as a brand, Every brand has their strong point, and to me, Daniel Smith is the granulation king. They have wonderful granulation in the granulating pigments. They make the very best of it. It is Daniel Smith that has seen that these unique qualities of these pigments can be used and that there will be people wanting to use that. Um, and it's become a huge success. I mean, I think that it is the Primatex and the, the granulation, granulating paints that are making them big in the whole world at the moment. Um, that doesn't mean that all their granulating colours are best or most beautiful of all. There are differences. Sometimes Rembrandt wins, sometimes Daniel Smith wins. So what I advise you to do is to just look at the reviews. Um, Jane Blundell also has beautiful swatches online. Just take a look at them and try to get a picture in your mind of how a color, what a color looks like. And then buy the colors of the brand you love most. So you buy some colors Daniel Smith, some colors Rembrandt. Maybe you find a beautiful Sennelier color or a Schmincke Horodam, but just you know, if I have to name the very strong point of Daniel Smith, it's got to be the granulating um, pigments. Um, but um, you will see that Rembrandt is not doing a bad job either. A final remark about the review is that the swatches have been painted on Canson Monval 140 pounds paper. Um, that is um, watercolor paper with little texture. And I do that on purpose. Um, in the first place, mm, half of my work is illustrative. So um, I work on rather flat and on rather smooth paper. The other reason is that I like to 
challenge the paint and see what it does without the help of texture. So keep that in mind when you look at um, the review, when you look at the swatches, because when you use paper with um, uh, you know, a coarser texture, you will see more granulation. And then one final, final remark is that in the color charts and also in the swatches you'll be seeing, when you see an S in front of the colors in, on the utter left of the page, then it is in the set of 12 Rembrandt granulating colors. We're starting off with 596 manganese violet um, and there you can see a very clear difference between the Rembrandt on the left and the other three colors by Horodam, Sennelier and Blocks. Daniel Smith did not have this exact same color in the collection that I have, which is the full collection of, I believe, two years ago. So this is a PV16 and as you can see, Rembrandt make a beautiful, bright manganese violet. Um, Blocks and Horodem are both a bit more what I like to call towards the brown end and Sennelier is much more bluish. Um, I love the granulation of this colour um, but that's something that's good in all these um, brands. So this is a matter of preference which one you like best. The 507 Ultramarine Violet which is PV15 um, is a beautiful colour by Rembrandt. Um, you can see it looks much like the 108 by Daniel Smith and the 903 by Sennelier, but the 234 blocks, it deviates a lot from it, from it and is much bluer. I love the texture here and you can clearly see that there is a difference between the Sennelier and the Daniel Smith and the um, Rembrandt ones. Um, personally, of all these colors, I prefer the Rembrandt here. Um, but whether you like the Daniel Smith more or the Rembrandt, that's your personal preference. There is a little difference in color um, where the Daniel Smith seems to go a little bit more towards the blue side. For 539 Cobalt Violet, which is PV14, um, I don't think it matters a lot which color or which brand you have. Um, I love the granulation and the color of them all because they're all very, very similar. So the colors you see is 539 Rembrandt. It's the 030 Daniel Smith and the 431 by Blocks. Now the Ultramarine Deep, which is 506 Rembrandt, is beautiful I think in all these brands only I really really prefer the Rembrandt here just take a look at that beautiful granulation for me this just screams paint on me or draw on me um, the other colors are quite similar it's the 106 by Daniel Smith the 315 by Sanyo Sennelier and the 253 by um, Blocks the colors are quite similar, although Sennelier seems to be a little bit warmer, but only a tad if perhaps I didn't pick up a little bit much of that paint, because I have to be honest with you and say I'm not 100% sure if that's not what happened. But um, PB29 comes in different tones of this color from different manufacturers. So sometimes it's hard to pinpoint whether a difference in a swatch is my doing or that it's, it, it's really a difference in the paint. But I really love all of these and I, this makes me want to start painting straight away. Did I mention already that the first colored um, column is a pigment number? So when I say this is PB29, French Ultramarine, then the PB29 is the number of the pigment that's been used to create this color. So this is 503 French Ultramarine. Um, it's a gorgeous color and as you can see, it's very similar to the Daniel Smith. Um, it looks like the blocks, the 251 blocks is a little bit flat here, um, has um, way less texture here. Um, not too sure about the Sennelier 312, um, but the, the 034 Daniel Smith looks very much like the um, Rembrandt here. 
This is 511 Cobalt Blue that's made with PB28. Um, all the colours are very similar, only there's one remark about the 025 Daniel Smith. On my dot card, there was just very, very, very little of this paint. So um, I had to really scrape it off to get some colour in this swatch. So I'm not sure if this swatch seems flat because um, there was not enough paint on my brush or that the um, colour just granulates less than the other brands do. Because the 309 Sennelier and 452 Horodam are... Uh, no, so not, sorry, that's not Horodam, that's Blocks, um, are very, very similar. Onto the 598 Cerulean Blue Greenish that's made with PB36. Um, out of these three swatches, I think here the um, Daniel Smith 021 is the winner in granulation as it gives beautiful texture. When you take a look at the Rembrandt, the utmost left um, behind the PB36, you can see that even with a lot of water, um, the granulation is less. The Blocks 5451 uh, has even less granulation there. So I think here Daniel Smith is a winner. But still, the colour in itself is beautiful, and I will definitely be using that. Now, the 550 Cerulean Blue Deep is very obviously a chrome colour. It's Cobalt Chromite, the PB36. Um, it's the same pigment that's been used for the previous colour, only this one um, has a much stronger feel of a chromium colour to it. Um, I couldn't find it in any other um, of the colours I have by any other brand, so I couldn't compare it with you. I can only show you that, yes, there is granulation, and um, when you use it um, without too much water on the far right, you can see it's a colour that um, becomes a little bit opaque and um, a little chalky. The 682 Cobalt Turquoise Green has a unique pigment for my personal watercolour collection. No other brand seems to be working with the PG26, at least not that I have. Um, it's a lovely colour though, and I think especially landscape painters and plant painters, but botan botanical painters, will love this colour. Um, but the granulation, the force is not very strong in this one, I'm afraid. Then we have Viridian, Emerald Green, 616. Um, this one is made with PG-18, not with, um, what is it, the PG-7 that many brands use, which is a Thale Green. Um, I really loved seeing this um, pigment in the set uh, because it's such a different colour from the PG-7 um, that is very, very bright and vivid and in your face. This is a very laid back and calm colour that you can use in nature paintings or landscapes, botanicals, etc, etc. Um, Daniel Smith also has this uh, 112 and uh, Blox has it in 261. Um, but I have to remark that um, the block seems a little bit fainter. I really tried very hard to lay down as much colour, but it came off a little bit difficult. So um, there is the, cut, the tinting strength of their paint is not as strong. Rembrandt do a really great job. The only um, remark I have about it is that um, I laid it down quite thick on the right side, which is why I have the second photo to show that when you do so, um, you will see a light shimmer on top um, because there is this little layer, it, it will dry up a little bit shimmering if you put on too much paint in one area. So it's best to use thin layers rather than one thick layer here. For any watercolourist, the 629 Green Earth by Rembrandt is very interesting. The reason is that they make it with PG23, a single pigment. It's not a colour with a lot of tinting strength, but it's a beautiful natural colour that you can also use like in skin tones if you don't mind the granulation. 
Um, the only brand I have that also makes their green earth with the same pigment is the 161 by Blocks. But as you can see, there is less granulation there and the color seems to be a bit weaker and a bit more towards the khaki end than the green earth by Rembrandt, which seems to be an actual green. The texture is there, it's lovely, but it's also an elegant soft texture, so it's not overpowering should you want to use it to tone down the pink and skin tones, for example. What's remarkable with this colour is that I found out that many manufacturers actually make a composition um, using a, a brown pigment in this to give this um, colour some tinting strength because Green Earth is um, just a very, uh, the PG23 is just a very weak colour. Um, so many manufacturers will choose a multi pigment for this colour and um, Rembrandt is one of the few who has a single pigment colour for this. So that's very interesting for mixes for watercolourists. Now here's a colour I was wondering what it was doing in the collection of granulating pigments because I see no pig no granulation at all here. It's um gold ochre three um two three one made with PY forty three. Um Sennelier has the same colour. That one seemed made of the same pigment. That one seems to have a little bit of granulation in there, but the granulating force on this one isn't very strong either. It's a beautiful um, golden ochre though, so in itself it's a beautiful colour, but I wouldn't buy it if you're looking for a very beautiful granulating colour. As you see, there is no Daniel Smith comparison. The reason is that Daniel Smith have... Um, Five colour numbers that match this one, but not one that I could say is um, a direct, a direct um, twin of this one. So the colour numbers you could try are 123, 134, 147, 114 and 144. They're all golden um, ochres and some of that I think it's a Monte Amiata is um, the most granulating of that um, set um, but I couldn't compare it because it wasn't exactly the same for the comparison. The 234 Raw Sienna is also made with the PY43 but does seem to granulate so if you are looking for a granulating version of this colour I would choose the Raw Sienna over the Gold Ochre. I found no other Siennas were, um, who were made with the same uh, pigment in the other brands. The 410 Greenish Umber made with PBR8 is one of my favourite colours um, of this set because I use it a lot in my tree paintings. I love the granulation in this one and I think it's beautiful. Um, compared to the Horodam, I think in this case the Rembrandt wins. Also, it is slightly warmer with um, a more brownish undertone than um, the Horodam, which seems to be heading a little bit more towards the grey end. So that's the 665 Horodam versus the 410 um, Rembrandt. Then on to a colour I think you must have been curious about if you've been working with Daniel Smith. The Lunar Black is in this series. It's a 049. The middle colour is by Daniel Smith, but it's about um, the 735 Rembrandt Oxid Black made of PBK11, just like the Daniel Smith. Schmincke Horodam also has this colour made with the same pigment um, and it's got number 791. You can see some differences there. The clearest difference is between Horodam and the rest. The Horodam seems to go a little bit towards the brown end. It's a rather warm um, black. So then the Daniel Smith is absolutely the blackest of them um, and maybe the coolest of these three. And then the Rembrandt um, is also very black, but it's just a tad of warm gray um, underneath. So granulation in the mall is marvellous, um, so I wouldn't mind using any of these. Now we get to what someone called the fun colours, and um, I think these are indeed fun mixes. Personally, I wouldn't buy them very quickly because um, once you have the 735 Oxide Black, you can make any 
of these granulating mixes that you like. Um, but on the other hand, if you want to do really, you know, big services or if you want to use it a lot, then it's fun to buy them. Um, the 230 Dusk Yellow by Rembrandt is on the left and the Van Gogh um, equivalent is on the right. And you can see they have a different kind of texture. It's probably got to do with how finely ground the pigments are and what pigments have been used, the yellow, how the pigments of the yellow and black interact. So as you can see, there is a little bit of a difference. The Van Gogh on the right looks much like an ultrasound. Here with the Dusk Violet or Dusk Pink, um, it's a 373. Um, you can see there is a rather a big difference between the Rembrandt on the left and the Van Gogh on the right. The Van Gogh is much brighter and um, the Rembrandt is much more black. So in this case, um, I think if you were choosing between these colors, it very much depends on what you want. What I really like here is that they've created a dark pink with the texture um, that might be a very good basis for a painting for me. But I think I personally prefer the toned down color of the um, left. So I might probably mix these, I think. Here we get to the 630, which is a dusk green. Um, in both instances, the PG7 is used, which is Viridian, the Thale green um, Viridian. Um, which is rather bright. So here you can see a very clear difference between um, the pigments used in the Rembrandt on the left and the Van Gogh on the right because they really do have a different look. I think overall you can say these Van Gogh dusk colours are much more coloured and the Rembrandt versions are much blacker and much more toned down. So it very much depends on which effect you like most. Um, it's probably got to do with how finely ground these pigments are because in the Rembrandts I see sharper lines whereas the Van Goghs tend to be a little bit softer. But then again, in, bo in both um, swatches for each of these three colours, I find enough canvas to work from should I, start, should I use this as a, ba as a basis for painting and drawing on. And then the last one, this Cerulean Blue 534 is at the bottom of the page and it's not because I intended it to be so, but because I found out very late that there was a mistake in the brochure where it didn't say it's granulating, which I already found a little bit surprising, being um, using um, pigment number PB35, which is granulating. Um, but then I saw it is in the granulating set, so this was probably a misprint in the brochure so I decided to add this color to the bottom of the page so as you can see this is a beautiful light blue just like cerulean should be and there is a gorgeous amount of texture in there for this color if you look at the 453 by blocks you can see they didn't quite manage to get that much granulation into it then the Daniel Smith 206, I can't possibly say if this is as good. The reason being that, again, just like the other cerulean colour, there was just too little paint on the dot of the dot card to paint a decent, minute um, swatch. So I scraped everything I could from the page, but this is what I ended up with. And I have to be fair about it. I can't give you a full comparison on that. Although I think the tone of the color, it's very light here, but you can also, see, you can already see that um, it looks very similar to the other one. But I really, really love this color. And since it is a light blue, it makes a fantastic underpainting for anyone using, um, um, granulating paints as a Kickstarter for their watercolor paintings. So this was my um, review of these granulating colors by Rembrandt. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe to my channel. I will, of course, um, put a high resolution photo on my blog. You will find the link below. I will also put a link to Jane Blundell's website where you can look up 
um, a hearse watch is granulating paints. I will link to all the brands of paint I've used here. Of course, Rembrandt and the brochure. That's very much worth um, browsing through. And um, well, I hope you I hope to see you again in a next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.